I wanted to talk about something today that has come up in our women's group, and of course it's come up many times in my coaching sessions with women, and I think it deserves some awareness and attention and um, for both men and women. And <clears throat> apparently, um, you know, at least according to the Native American Tantra, they say that Mm, probably more like 55% of women do not experience um, orgasm during intercourse because it's just not rubbing the right area in order to bring her to that place. And so that means that she needs to come either manually or orally. And, um, and it's amazing how many women <clears throat> are getting left behind by their men. Um, and you know, there's a, a phenomenon that happens with men that's different from with, when women, uh, orgasm where, because they actually are, um, having their life force, um, semen coming out of their body. It's literally not in their body anymore and they just shift gears and it's over and they're tired from that life force leaving them. So it's so important, and I teach, um, you know, how how crucial it is to take care of the woman first before that happens, because otherwise it's kind of a done deal, and she ends up getting left behind. So um, it was interesting, just in kind of analyzing it, I guess, and discussing it in the women's group, how many of us have had that experience where we have been left behind, um, the man ends up orgasming and then rolls over and is tired and not present anymore, not into it anymore, and leaves her without orgasm, even though all that energy has been built up in her and she needs release. And, you know, for many of us, it's happened enough times that it's it's become a problem. And what's kind of interesting is men often wonder why women aren't more enrolled in sex, especially in the married life. And this is one of the reasons. Um, you can imagine if the roles were reversed and if a woman came first and was done and got up and left or wouldn't take a, took a shower or fell asleep, you'd be sure that he would be squawking about that and wouldn't put up with that. And so... It's, it seems kind of like a no-brainer logical to realize that that's not sustainable to leave your partner hanging without getting her pleasure. And there's a lot of wounding in our culture around this, unfortunately, because it's been happening way too often and for way too long. And it's something that I haven't honestly heard talked about very much until now. And I'm actually the one that brought it up in the group and the whole group came very alive around it and we started talking about you know using conscious communication in the bedroom which is something I termed <laughs> for us and um, we even created a separate women's group specifically to talk about having conscious communication in the bedroom and discussing these things because they were so alive for all of us and all of us have been there and experienced it and or we're experiencing it presently in our um, in our love lives, and so I just thought um, discussing it would bring some attention because I would honestly my my intention is to empower both men and women by bringing awareness to this happening. And um, men, if you're wanting your women to stay enrolled in um, wanting to continue having sex with you. You're going to need to take care of her and give her her orgasm too. Otherwise, there's um, really no reason to stick with you. Um, it's just um, imbalanced if you're getting yours and not giving her hers. So, um, you know, that first impression, especially if you're not providing that, then she's likely to walk away and probably likely not to tell you why necessarily. Um, <clears throat> women are, seems like we're kind of trained culturally to be careful with the male ego and 
We often, to be honest, we discussed how we go into shock when this happens. I know that I related to this and and had a recent experience actually where I uh, noticed myself going into shock, going into kind of this freeze mode um, where my breathing got really shallow. I I wasn't moving very much. I was just sort of in this trauma state because I couldn't believe that this person was doing this to me and thought that that was okay. And th what made it especially painful for me this time was that I had been consciously communicating about it for some time now and been patient and tolerant and gracious and made it clear finally that this was not to happen anymore, that it was not okay with me that if we're going to play, we're going to both benefit from it <clears throat> or we're not going to play at all. So I made it really clear this was a deal breaker at this point. And um, it happened again and I went into shock. And this is often what happens with women, <clears throat> which is unfortunately because I think it's better to nip it in the bud and, and speak up about it right when it's happening in the moment so he understands, hey, this is not cool. And <clears throat> often what happens instead is that she goes into shock and is not really sure what to say um, and in a way that's going to work and be effective because there's so much triggering that's happening. Trauma, you know, anger comes up, um, shock, and um, feeling disrespected, feeling used. And so it's sometimes hard to find words that are going to be um, effective. And I know for myself, I am, I get really embarrassed for him because I'm like, wow, you know, you really blew it. Um, this is not a way to be with a woman effectively. And I actually feel ashamed of him in that moment that he doesn't know better and that he's doing this, you know, so unconsciously. So, that's often what's going on with the woman and if the man just I mean we teach this in Tantra but I guess it's maybe not completely mainstream yet where it needs to be understood that if you have a woman in that 55 percent of the female population who is not able to orgasm during intercourse you need to take care of her first and ask a lot of questions as to how you can do that effectively what position works for her what you know? What kind of pressure does she need? What kind of speed does she need in um, in your hand movement, or you know, all those little things that hopefully she knows her body well enough to guide you. And um, it is just about learning her body. And the other piece I wanted to bring into this too is that it was interesting how. How when we were discussing it, it really felt like it has become, some might label it sexual neglect. Um, some might even re label it, um, ne neglect is a form of abuse. It's a more subtle form of abuse because there's not violence. But it is uh, violent in a sense to basically the man in that moment is sending the message, your needs aren't important to me. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to come and, you know, who cares about you? And it's, um, it's a very devaluing, disrespectful message to be sending your woman. Um, and it almost, it, we, I brought up actually how to me, when it has happened in my life, mostly, when I was younger and, you know, kind of learning how to work with these situations, it feels like a mild form of rape because the man is doing what he wants to do to get what he wants and not caring at all about how I feel, um, not respecting my body, not giving back, not reciprocating. And so I think that this is a serious offense. Um, and a lot of women have experienced this over and over again. It's a repeated thing. 
that seems to almost um, irritate the wound. It's a cultural wound as well as a personal wound to have this happen. It's it feels horrible, and it it's a great way to lose respect. You know, your woman is probably not going to respect you. Period. After that, um, it's just not a way to take care of her, and so. I just wanted to bring that awareness because men may not, I don't know if the awareness isn't there, something's not registering because obviously I've been in, in this position enough times that I, it kind of is, is a little strange where I'm like, how could they not understand that? I mean, would they like it if I came and then they didn't get to and over and over and over again? I mean, that's just not sustainable. So I do feel that it is a form of, subtle abuse as neglect is and that we need to shine the light on it um, because it's really going to be hard for her to be enrolled in wanting to be with you again and to respect you as a man and to really trust you enough to want to explore and experiment and be playful and feel safe. She's truly not going to be able to open up to you um, if that's happening. So I hope this sheds some light on this situation that I think kind of has been in the closet for a long time. And if you are someone who has experienced this and knows the pain of what it's like to be left behind uh, in this way and sexually neglected, then my heart goes out to you as well, and I'm hoping that we can culturally heal this wound together, um, you know, in this decade at least. And um, I know that some of us had to cry um, and mourn it because it's happened enough in our lives, especially when we were younger. And then, you know, for some of us, it's, whoops, for some of us, it's showed up, it'll show up like it did for me recently. And I was like, wow, you know, and even, even after consciously communicating about it multiple times and making it really clear, you know, we're, we're not going to continue if, if, if you're going to do it this way, cause it doesn't work for me. And yet it still happened. So obviously we're needing to discuss it as a culture and bring it out in the open and shed light on it so that we can all be happy sexually and enrolled in it and have it be safe and fun and enlightening.